Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. One of the questions I get asked the most is how do I know if I'm hacked or if my system is compromised? Sometimes users will say I have a weird message or I've been experiencing some unexpected behavior. How do I dig into the system and figure out if there's something wrong or if it's been compromised? Now in this video, which is going to be a part of a beginner's guide to cybersecurity, we're going to introduce you to the field of digital forensics, which is effective detective work on a system. So we're going to start from the perspective of an everyday user. So let's say you've been noticing some strange behavior. First thing you would do is open up something like Task Manager. And you can do that pressing Control, Shift, and Escape. And this will show you all of the programs that are currently active and running on your computer. You may not recognize all of them because some of them are going to be system process, some of them are going to be drivers, and it's perfectly normal for these to be there. Now, Windows by default does not show the most in-depth view of process that are actually running. So in order to see that, you need to click on Go to Details and then you're going to see the actual process. Everything that's listed here is essentially code that is executing on your system right now and doing the things that you are seeing. So if there is malware, it's probably in here. If you've been compromised or hacked, there has to be something in these process that's manipulating things on your system. So one of the quickest and easiest ways to get rid of unexpected behavior, as you've heard, is to turn it off and on again, which is essentially restarting if you're running a computer. Why does this work? Well, restarting your system effectively throws all of this out the window and you start from scratch with the few programs that your operating system needs to load for your system to work. Now, these include services and startup programs. In Task Manager itself, you can see a list of your startup programs. And I'm guessing most of you already know this. These are programs that will automatically be loaded when your system starts. So if you see anything here that's suspicious, you can go ahead and try disabling it. Now, you're not going to figure out immediately, so it's going to be a process of trial and error. But if you see something that you don't understand, don't recognize, you can right click, disable, and they'll prevent it from starting. Unfortunately though, this is not the only way for malware or a hacker to persist within your system. Now, what you may not realize is the startup tab does not show you all the programs that are actually loading on your system. In fact, there are tons of services and drivers that you absolutely need for your system to work that are not listed here. For a more comprehensive listing, you can use a tool like Autoruns, and this is part of the sysinternal suite. You can get it from sysinternals.com. Don't worry, this is maintained by Microsoft. But as you can see, we have a list of a lot of software here, and this is a lot more comprehensive and confusing at first than the list you see on Task Manager. Now, the way Windows works, Windows uses something called a registry, which is a part of the operating system that stores important information. So, for example, applications that load at startup, things that show up when you right-click on your desktop, all those context menu options. It's all in here. And if you go through this thoroughly enough, you will find every single thing that is currently registered with the operating system. As you can see, we have a leftover startup item from Komodo Internet Security, and I'm just gonna delete this right now. You can also see we have a lot of headings under here. So for example, log on are tasks that are going to be run when a user logs on to the computer. This is different from startup. So there are a set of programs that execute when your computer boots up and gets to the loaded state. Then there's a bunch of additional programs that are loaded when the user actually logs on and everything listed here is just that. Now, how do you interpret a listing like this? So firstly, you have the auto run entry. This is the actual registry key that tells the operating system to load a certain application. Now, what's important here is the application that's being loaded. So for example, here, it's command prompt. Here it's iTunes, here it's Discord. And next to it, you can actually see a brief description of what the thing is along with the publisher and the location of the program. So you can right click here and click on properties and it's going to show you the actual application that's loading. So if you have a malware application on your system, you could potentially locate it within one of these entries. Now with sysinternals, you can also look these up on VarsTotal. 
You can also locate them on your system and then upload them to any kind of analysis site like Intezer. But at this point, you may be wondering, well, this is all well and good if I actually have a malware application that's starting up, but what if it is fileless malware? Haven't you heard? There's this thing called fileless malware, and yes. Now let's get to a concept called scheduled tasks. Before we do that, I just want to show you how I got here. So you can always right click on the start menu, go to computer management, and that'll show you many things among which you have the task scheduler. You can also just search for it and start and you'll find it. But what is this? And what are all these things that are listed here? So here's the thing. You don't necessarily need a malware program to have a compromised system. What you need is malicious control. For example, if it's an info stealer, they may want to transfer some data from your computer to them in the form of logins or passwords. Now, you don't necessarily need a dedicated malware program to do that. In fact, you could use Windows own tools or you could just write commands and execute those commands via command prompt. And that is where task scheduler comes in. So here is a list of all the tasks that are scheduled to run at some point in this computer. So it's kind of like automation. Think of it like Siri shortcuts or if this and that. It's basically automated tasks on Windows. A lot of legit applications will use it, for example, to check for updates, but you could just as easily have a malicious command encoded in here doing things for an attacker, they don't even need to have a malicious process running. All they need is an entry in the task scheduler that tells CMD or some other Windows application to do something for them instead of for you. Now, if you double click on one of these tasks, it's going to open up a lot of details in terms of the different triggers that are defined for it, the next time it's going to be run. So again, if you see something suspicious here, that could be an indication of an attack. Unfortunately, though, an attacker doesn't even have to be this obvious. They don't have to put a scheduled task. They could actually exploit a Windows service to perform malicious functions. Now, if you go into the Services tab on Auto Runs, you're going to see all the services that are executing. Many of these are actually located in System32 and part of the driver mechanism that runs different hardware components and keeps your computer working. So you could have a malicious driver or rootkit in here, and that would give an attacker a lot of options when it comes to performing malicious actions on your computer. Now, of course, looking at lists like this isn't enough because you don't know what these things are. So, for example, what is PLA? Is this malware? I don't know. It says it's performance logs and alerts and it's verified and it's located in system 32. But if I don't know what this is, it could just as easily be a malware that is sending logs and alerts to a command and control server. And it's going to be impossible for me to cover everything you can do in terms of forensics from memory dumps to reverse engineering in one video. So we're going to look at more in-depth techniques in upcoming videos, so make sure you're subscribed for that. But for now, I will say one of the easiest ways to verify is to actually go to the location and upload whatever the source material is to a site like Intezer or Vars Total and check out the analysis report. But here's the thing, until you have some practical experience, it's going to be really hard for you to actually look at this data and figure out what everything is. So we're actually going to do a live workshop on our Discord right after this video premieres. So you're going to see a link on screen right now. Just click on it, join the community, and you can participate in a live workshop where we're going to go into your system and figure out what's going on. You can also ask any questions. I will be there in voice chat. You will have a chance to come up on stage, ask us any questions you have, and just hang out and have fun while you learn something new. If you're watching this in the future, well, we'll have more, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and join the Discord, link in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope that serves as a quick introduction. Please like and share it if you'd like to see more content like this. And a big thank you to our sponsors, Intezer.
One of the ways you can analyze any file on your system is to upload it to a site like Intezer Analyze. Once you do that, you will get a comprehensive report and they will use their unique gene matching technology to tell you if the file you uploaded has any similar code with other malware. You can also, if you are up for it, look at the code yourself right here, all the way down to assembly instructions. So if you want a fast track into the series, you can sign up for a community edition on Intezer and start playing with the platform right away. You can also execute malware in a sandbox using their dynamic execution and it's going to show you all the process that are created and even machine screenshots. I use Synthesizer all the time for malware analysis. In fact, it's one of my favorite places to look at new samples and look at what's going on in the industry. So check them out using the link in the description and show them some love for supporting the PC security channel. If you're a business and you'd like to work with us, do a cybersecurity audit or need help in choosing a solution, check out our website, tpsc.tech and feel free to get in touch there. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure, and I'll see you on Discord.